if we want to compare the pattern of the substitution, we see this again. So the J should be on the top. So I hope the in your handout is right. And we want to try to compare the changes we observe right now. But we observe more T to A change. What does that mean? We cannot really compare T to A change to another A to C change. The baseline, we should have a baseline. So if we have the ancestral sequence, or if we can assume or like try to predict and reconstruct, maybe reconstruct is a better word, the ancestral sequence, then we can ask how frequent this type of mutation occur by given the <coughs> composition. So in the numerator is the changes from I to J, just as I say from A to C. And in the denominator is how many A's in the original sequences, right? Because if you have more A, of course you observe more changes. But if you have more C, you also observe more C to like all the other nucleotides. So you have to sort of like divide it by the proportion or of this type in the original sequence. So that's the comparison. But basically we want to from to op, to to try to observe the patterns from one nucleotide to the others and compare all the possibilities as shown in this little diagram. How we do that? I say you have to reconstruct the ancestry sequence because in most of the cases we are dealing with living organism and we don't know their ancestor, we never met them we have no chance to dig out a fossil and just happen to be the ancestor of the species we are interested. And even you have the fossil, you might not be able to dig out the sequence information, although now we can do a lot of ancient DNA analysis. So now we want to turn the topic to uh, try to assign the substitutions in a given topology. So here is a simple diagram. Give you three lineages, and you have three lineages. And in this diagram, in our test book, we have a pseudogene of species A. Then the second one is the functional gene of species A. And we have the third sequence is also a functional gene of the species B. Then the sequences are given in the table. So with this information now, we have to be able to infer the changes on the branch. So we want to know what happened in this particular branch, like the dash line. And we want to know what happened in this particular branch leading to species A. So to do this, we have to take a parsimonious uh, approach. This is this word you probably heard in your evolution. That is, I have the sequence here, A, G, and G. So two of them are G, one is A. Then I will try to reconstruct the ancestral sequence Maybe I should write it here using this diagram. Okay, so this is A with pseudogene, A the functional gene, and B the functional gene. Now the sequence is A, G, G. Okay. So given the sequence I observe, one possibility could happen in the past is the ancestral sequence is a G and after like diverge in this lineage it keep unchanged or the one change doesn't have a chance to survive 
but to this point there's a gene duplication occurred and this in a species now we observe two copies of this particular sequence one is non-functional so we said this is a pseudogene the other one is a functional gene then in this case the sequence at this ancestral state is it's still a G so if we do this then one possible change happened is in the lineage after the two copy diverge so there's a change from G to A so see I, I draw that in this lineage so this is the change from ancestral G to a state and this is how we try to use the information we have here and reconstruct the possible scenario in the past of course you can think about different ways you could also say there's another possibility you say what if the origin so I use a different color hope this will work yeah good one so the original state is an A then because here is an A so if you assume here is an A and you observe an A here it will say this one is an A so in this lineage there's no change in this lineage there's no change but in the other two lineages you observe G here that's why you think here is an A to G change here is another A to G change in both cases they could be right because we don't know the answer right nobody knows the ancestral sequence except the, you did the, like a experimental evolution in your laboratory you save the organism at different time point otherwise we don't know the sequence so they probably both ha have the chance to be happen and what we could decide is okay we like to define a path which only occurred only require minimal changes so in this case G to A is only one change in this lineage but A to G has to have independent happen independently twice and the probability for this scenario to this scenario is lower because the given the mutation rate is low and you have to have two identical mutation in two independent lineages so that's the idea we like to use parsimony's approach to say the minimal change could happen in this site is the black one is the g to a change we could be wrong right because evolution could happen in any direction but this is like we use similar approach try to do for every size so this is a practical approach we do then the underlying reason is we think this has lower probability than the other okay then use this type of uh, approach we can reconstruct the sequence of the ancestral nodes and also define the changes on each branch so we use this approach like repeatedly in the rest of most of lectures and this is a very simple approach if you only have three sequences so you can do the rest of it and in our uh, midterm exams I will give you the sequence and ask you to give me the changes you don't have to write all the possibilities this is only for the lecture so at the end actually I think the red one is the red one has lower probability 
So I would like to accept the black scenario here. So, and you need to be able to do that just like by hand, by looking at the three sequences. Of course, with a lot of sequence information with multiple changes in a particular site, the situation becomes uh, much more difficult. Sometimes it's um, unable to be determined. So there are multiple ways to get this and they are equally possible or very like or equally likely and you cannot decide one way or the other. But with three sequences, you should be able to uh, do this practice. So I'll do that in the midterm just for you to practice a little bit about how we do that. And you immediately see like here, you have sequences you cannot uh, decide, right? If you have, for example, here is another case. Let's look at the third one. Yeah, the third one, A, G, and C. So this and red one is more cool. So let me switch to the red. So this is A, this is a G, this is a C. So the reason we could do the assignment is because the changes are simpler. You can see the first one, you have two sequences are exactly the same. So you know, you just have to assign that one to be the ancestral sequence, then you can do all the, all the rest. But here you have the three sequences are all in different nucleotide states. So in this case, it would be really hard because there's no information for you to assign the sequence either for this node or this node. They are all equally possible. If you write down any nucleotide at those positions, you probably also require like at least two mutations to get this pattern. So that's why to be conservative, we put this side, we leave that side unanalyzed, we say, undecided. So we don't assign anything on that because we found multiple possibilities and we cannot decide on one. So that's why in this table we have undecided. So this is the practice we do with the sequence analysis and we can assign the changes on the branch. This table is try to ask the question at the last column is to ask the mutations happen or the changes happen in the dash lineage alpha. So that's the way we analyze it. So for the last one, the second to the last is the G, G, and A. So the differences for the last two. So the, the second to the last is G, G, and A. So we already did all the practice, so we know if these two are the G, we assign the ancestral node is a G. Then the AG here, actually without any other information, we don't really know. So we won't be able to know whether, like the changes in this branch. If we do not assign this one, we can say in this branch, this red, red long branch, there's a change from, there's a GA change. We don't know which direction, right? So it could, but if we want to assign a branch there, so we don't really, we can't decide. Without any more information, we can't decide. But what we can decide here is there's no change in this lineage. So that's the note there, say now. So there's a change, yeah, there's a change between A and G in this branch, not at this branch. So that's why we, in your textbook, textbook say there's no change. So that's the reason between the, this one and the very last one. Of course you can see, say here, you say this is A, 
So if there's A, the change is it's it here. It's A to G. It's in this, on this branch, not on this branch. The question is the changes on this branch. So that's all the table is trying to uh, reconstruct or to ask to estimate how many changes happen at this branch. So this is in the table. And of course you can assign this one if you think it, you reconstruct as, as an A. And it's equal likely if you assign here as a G, then you put the differences. On the other side, there's a G to A change. So both are at equal probability. So that's why we sometimes we just put a GA here because the question now is asking on this branch. So it doesn't matter what happened in that. But if you want to compare all the branches, actually this one, I didn't say this is like an out-group approach. Actually, we could do is to compare the differences between the black branch, that's the functional branch, and the dash branch, the pseudogene branch, in the same species. So we can compare the rate differences between a functional gene and a pseudogene. Use B as an outgroup. So we use it as an outgroup and we can assign the changes on this two branch and compare the differences in rate substitu the substitution rate between the two lineages. So this is what we do. So we call the B as an outgroup. So that's why we only consider or uh, analyze the changes happen in these two branches. Okay.